Hey guys, it's Di and I wanted to show you today how to make quick and easy bows at home for your infants or toddlers and I'm going to show you how to make corker bows today and there's a couple different kinds of bows you can make. You can make them with just the corker ribbon that's in the curls and you can also do it on top of a bow which I have here. I've made just a little bow and then put the corkers on top. I think that just adds a little extra special touch. So So here are my supplies all laid out and ready to go. I've got my glue gun over here, some scissors to cut the ribbon. I have a package of alligator clips, which you can get these at crafting stores. I also got a really big package of these off of eBay for a nominal price. I've got my different colors of ribbon that I want to use today. And then also I use wire to hold the ribbon together because I find it's a little bit easier to work with. Here are the dowel rods, and you want to use the next size down from the size ribbon that you're planning on using. So since I'm going to use the corker ribbon in the smaller size, which is the 3 8 I have gotten the next size down in dowel rod. And then I use the clothespins on the side to hold the ribbon on. And then there's a package of needles to help hold the ribbon together when you're putting everything together and extra glue sticks. And that is everything you need to put your ribbons together. After you've collected all your supplies, go ahead and start preheating your oven to around 250 to 275 depending on how hot your oven is. And I've already got my glue gun here uh, heating up, it's plugged in. So all those things are heating up and getting ready. So what you want to do is you want to take your first dowel rod and have your clothes pins laid out to connect your ribbon to it. And to measure the amount of ribbon that you need, um, a quick and easy way that I found to do it is just taking the ribbon once down the dowel rod and then twice down the dowel rod and then a third time just to make sure that you have enough ribbon. And then I go ahead and cut it off at that length. And then you want to start the ribbon here at the top and you're going to spiral it all the way down so the clothes pins are to help hold the ribbon in place. So you just want to get it here on the end where it will stay and wrap it around and then you can finish off the edges at the end so it doesn't matter if you have a little bit of excess. And then you're going to take the ribbon and you're going to spiral it all the way down the dowel rod and I found the quick and easiest way to do this is literally just to turn the rod and then keep the ribbon in the same spot. I used to try to do it the opposite way and I found that this is quicker. So you're going to get down to the end of the rod and you can have it spaced as close together as you would like and then you're going to clip it down here at the bottom and you will clip off the excess and that is what your rod will look like. So you're going to do a couple of these rods and you can do whatever colors that you're wanting to put into your bow. So I'm going to do a couple of cupcake ones. Once you get used to how much ribbon you're going to be using after you spiral it out, then you kind of have a gauge of, um, sometimes if you wound it tighter, it takes three lengths. Sometimes if you don't wind it as tight, it only takes two. So I'm going to take that and spin it onto the dowel rod. And I kind of like if it's a little bit tighter, it gives it a nice curl. So I try to get them as close together as possible. All right. So then after those are done, you're going to put them on your baking sheet and put them in the oven for about 10 to 15 minutes, depending again on the heat of your oven. All right. So our baking sheet is ready with all of our dowel rods. And you can see that I did have one dowel rod here in the middle that had two extra pieces of ribbon that were shorter lengths. And then I just doubled up the clothespin to start the new ribbon. So you can do that as well. And I like doing it in one long length to go down the ribbon because I find it's quicker and easier just to roll it all at one time. And then I can do my cutting afterwards. But if, it, if you have extra pieces left over, you can definitely do shorter lengths. Or if you prefer pre-cutting, you can always do that as well. Alright, so we're going to put it in the oven and it's preheated and ready to go. So those are going to stay in there and I have the oven set at 250. Those are going to be in there for about 15 minutes. So we'll go ahead and set the timer up here. Okay. 
Okay, so now if you want to make just the corker bow, you've got your corker pieces out of the oven, you've let them cool, and they're ready to be taken off the dowel rods. And while you were waiting for those to cool, if you wanted a bow underlay, you could go ahead and make that. So I'll go ahead and show you real quick how to make the bow underlay if you want the bow underlay. And we'll do the two different types of bows. So you're just going to start with a piece of regular ribbon, and it's going to be a little bit wider. This is a 7 8 inch ribbon and I'm going to take it and loop it over and from my center I'm going to leave a little bit of a tail hanging off because that will be the edge of our bow and you're just going to wrap it up and pinch it again with the center of your thumb and loop it under again and then one more time up again leaving a tail on that side and then you're going to take all of those and bunch them together and then just pinch them together with your finger and your thumb we're going to take a little bit more of the wire that we use to put together the corkers and I'm going to cut off a little piece of that and I'm going to put that wire around the center of the bow where I've pinched it together and tighten it down so that it keeps its bow shape and then you've got your bow to put the corker overlay on top of so I'm just going to wrap around that excess wire and then to finish off this bow I'm going to go ahead and take the same ribbon that it's made out of and I'm going to cut a little piece of that off. Just a short piece will be fine for that. And then we're going to hot glue that on the center of the bow. After you have your center piece on your bow, you have your bottom bow that you're going to put underneath your corker. So we'll just go ahead and set that aside and we can finish off the ends after the corker's already on there. So then you're going to take the corker ribbons that you just got out of the oven and they're going to look like this. And to get them off the dowel rod, it's really, really easy. You just take the clothes pens off of the rod, and then a lot of times they'll just slide right off and they'll be ready to go. And so they should be bouncy and they will hold their shape. So make sure that after you take the pan out of the oven, you obviously want to let it cool down before you start working with them and the cooling down will actually help them set as well. So if they're 15 minutes in the oven, I generally let them set for 15 minutes to cool as well. I'm making some alligator clips that were covered and there's a couple different ways that you can cover them. I really like this style alligator clip that has the rounded edges. I just think those are a little bit more comfortable for babies and for infants that are smaller, I actually do a full covered clip where you can see that it's lined all the way on the inside. But then as, the, as they get older and they get to like a toddler age, I find that actually it works better to stay in their hair if the bottom does not have ribbon on it. So I just do a half lined clip. So you can see I've lined the inside with ribbon. It goes over the top and then just underneath the bottom to do a nice finished look on the side of the clip. To cut down my ribbon, all I'm doing is I'm just cutting it in half and then I'm turning it over and I'm cutting it in half again and I find that these two inch links look the best on toddler and infant hair bows. If you're going to be doing a corker for an older child or you want a more over the top bow then you could do a longer length like a three inch or a four inch corker so you can just cut your longer length corker ribbon. Alright, here's what all my corkers look like when they're cut and I'm going to do two bows out of all these corkers. I'm going to do one corker bow that is just the corker ribbons and then the other one I'm going to do an overlay on top of this regular ribbon so that way it's kind of like a regular ribbon with a little bit of extra. Alright, so these are all the pieces that are going to go in my only corker bow and I've used 14 corker pieces to make this. So I'm going to take my wire now and wrap it around the center of the bow and let me go ahead and show you how that's going to look. So I'm going to take my wire here and just wrap it around the center of the bow and you want to define center because you're going to be also finishing that off with a piece of ribbon too. So you're going to take the wire and just twist them together to hold them tight and that's going to give them a defined center. And then I usually wrap the wire around to make it a little bit more firm. And then that is what your corker is going to look like when it's all together. Alright, now we have the wire on our corker bow and we're going to go ahead and put our center on it. So I'm just going to use a plain white center over this. So you're going to take your piece of 3 8 ribbon and put just a little bit of hot glue on it. 
and then you have to find your defined center so make sure that they're all on the correct side and you'll just set this over the center of it and you'll finish it off like we finished off our regular bow and this is what our corker bow is going to look like so I'm just going to take this and find one of my finished ribbon clips and put a bit of glue on that as well and then we will have our corker bow and I really like this one because the polka dots I kind of feel look a little bit like sprinkles and so the little cupcakes are kind of complemented by the polka dots on the pink ones and it looks kind of like a cheerful cupcake sprinkle bow all right, so now we have our regular bow and our corker overlay, and those are both done. So what I'm going to do to put these together is I'm just going to put a little dab of super glue right in the middle of the regular bow, and I'm going to put the back of the corker bow on top of that. And you can see that they both have their own center overlay, but I'm going to go ahead and to finish it off, put one large overlay on top of them in the center to kind of bring it all together. And I'm just using a coordinating piece for that one. Alligator clip here that's been covered. I'm just going to put a bit of glue on the top there. You want to make sure you have enough on there for the bow to stay. And we're going to press those two together and then let that set and then we will have our finished bow. The last thing that you're going to need to do with both of your bows, and this is kind of up to your discretion as to how you would like to do it, all the edges have to be finished off somehow. So this ribbon will start to fray if you don't put some sort of um, fray check on it or something to finish off the ribbon. So you have to hold it over some sort of heat source. So if you don't want to use open flame, you can use other things that get warm like a light bulb or you can just use like a liquid stitch uh, fray check and make sure that you put it along all the edges. Something like this should dry clear. So you want to make sure that you do it not only on the edges of your main bow, but you have to do it on all the corker edges as well. So you just want a really light coat and it has to cover the whole edge so that there's no fraying. And then once all those edges dry, you'll have a finished bow. So these are what your finished bows will look like. You can see that the number of corkers that you use and also the size of the bow underneath changes the look a little bit. These two are the bows that have the bow underlay underneath the corker and this bow up here is just the corker bow alone. So you can see that they look just a little bit different depending on the materials used. And really the opportunities are endless as far as mixing up colors, doing themes for holidays. It really is up to you and your imagination to what bows you can create. So hopefully this tutorial has been helpful and thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks!